Hey, fifth grade. All right, so this week we are going to be going all the way back to the very beginning of the school year when we were in our first quarter and we learned about 5L2.1 and 2, and we did 3 also at the time. So there are three standards we covered where we looked at how um, organisms within ecosystems interact with one another. And uh, we had some vocabulary that we covered back then that was going uh, very critical and important. And you guys rocked 5L2.1 and 5L2.2 on your school net assessments. However, one area that we kind of struggled in was making those inferences on how animals would uh, affect one another in those ecosystems. So if one population decreased, what would happen to the other ones? Which ones would increase and decrease as well? So uh, we're going to be revisiting that again because we've already covered all the rest of our science uh, standard content for the rest of the school year. So we're heading back to this one that we had a little bit of a hiccup in so we can clarify our understanding a little bit. So I just want to go ahead and review some of the vocabulary that you will need for this lesson this week. Can you see me okay? Yes? Okay, good. So. Uh, a producer, a producers make their own food and get their own energy through the process of photosynthesis. So those are all your plants, like trees, grass, seaweed, algae, uh, flowers, roses, oak trees, anything that you can think of that grows out of the ground um, that is uh, green or, but mushrooms grow out of the ground too, but they're decomposers, but just think trees, leaves, bushes, shrubs, vines, grass, all of those. So uh, we remembered it during the year that producers are plants that make their food through photosynthesis. So P, 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 P. That's alliteration there for you. ELA connection. So um, producers are plants. Process of photosynthesis. Consumers gain energy by eating or consuming organisms for energy. Uh, so consumers consume. They eat things. So uh, any kind of animal you can think of is a consumer. We have rabbits, birds, snakes, bears, ants, people. So if you are eating, you are a consumer. So herbivores, a uh, herbivore is a type of consumer. So consumers can be broken down into to different categories. So herbivores are consumers that eat or consume only plants for energy. So herbivores are eating plants. So rabbits, goats, bees, those are examples of herbivores. Carnivores. Carnivores is a type of consumer that eats or consumes only meat. Now, what is meat? We talked about this before. Meat are animals, insects, flesh. That's meat. Um, so they can. Cons uh, carnivore consumes meat for energy. So what eats meat? What eats other animals or insects? Snakes do. Cats do. Sharks do. So those are some examples. Wolves. Um, uh, Dogs, domesticated dogs typically will eat mostly meat if they have the chance. Um, omnivores. Omnivores are consumers that eat or consume both plants and animals. And we talked about how omnivore, omni, eats a little bit of everything, right? So omni means all, like you can be omniscient, means, means you're all-knowing. So omnivores, vores meaning what they're eating. Omnivores eat everything. So whatever they can get their hands on, they're going to munch that stuff down. So scavengers. Scavengers are a type of consumer that eats, consumes dead plants and animals. So they're going to be nature's cleanup crew. We love scavengers, even though they creep me out a little bit. But we love them because they keep our roadsides and our ecosystem clean. And we don't have all the nasty, grody, dead stuff everywhere. So what are some examples of scavengers? Um, crabs, ants, hyenas, and vultures. Did I forget to go over omnivores examples? Uh, I think I did. So um, this is my version of a raccoon. Don't laugh at, at my uh, artwork here, please. Uh, raccoons are omnivores. They eat both plants and animals. People are omnivores. Usually eat plants and animals. And bears are omnivores. Uh, back to scavengers. Crabs are ocean or lake cl cleanup crew. Uh, ants, we see them taking away dead stuff all the time. Hyenas, I drew crazy eyes on this hyena. Um, they love to clean like the savanna dead stuff. They'll eat whatever they can get their hands on. And vultures, vultures, you always see them on the side of the road eating up all the dead roadkill. So, thank you cleanup crew, even though you're a little creepy. Decomposers, break down and decompose dead plants and animals and recycle nutrients back into the soil. So they are actually our recyclers in our ecosystems, and they're going to give those nutrients back to the soil, back for our plants to use in order to start that 
that process all over again. So what are some decomposers? Uh, fungi, mushrooms, uh, bacteria. This is definitely not to scale because bacteria you can't see with the naked eye. You need a microscope. Mold. That's supposed to be an orange with mold growing on it. Don't laugh at Miss, Mrs. Uh, artwork here. Okay. Yeast. Bread making. All of these are decomposers that recycle nutrients back into our ecosystem. So let's go ahead and look at this uh, from your PowerPoint slide lesson. This is a food web, and we talked about how food chains um, just show the movement of energy in our ecosystems um, through the organism. So grass is a producer. Insect would be, um, let's pretend this is a grasshopper, eats the grass, so he would be an herbivore. And then the vole eats that insect, so he is a carnivore because an insect is meat. So, um, and then he's eaten by a hawk. So the hawk is a carnivore, the vole is a carnivore, and the insect, well, at least in this food chain he is, and then the insect is the herbivore that eats the producer, which is grass. So that would be a food chain, just that one link. But when we're talking about how a lot of different organisms eat different things, that creates a food web because all these different organisms are interconnected. So when we're looking at the movement of energy, and of course that arrow points to where that energy goes. So when the insect eats the grass, the grass's energy goes to the insect. And when that insect is eaten by the vole, the insect's energy goes to the vole. And when the vole is eaten by the hawk, the energy goes from the vole to the hawk. So when you're dealing with food webs, you have a whole bunch of different interconnected relationships with all those organisms in that same ecosystem. So this is a forest ecosystem. Um, and if we look here, when we're dealing with this particular part of our standard, 5L2.3, where you have to make those inferences of what would happen in an ecosystem, let's, let's look at some scenarios. So here's our actual essential question that you'll be working on this week. Explain how one organism positively or negatively impacts another organism in the ecosystem. So if I was to look at some different scenarios, like for instance, what would happen if the fox population increase. So when you're going to answer questions like this, you really first got to look at that graphic. If you don't look at the graphic and look at all the little arrows and where that stuff's going to, you're not going to be able to process that information correctly in order to make your inference. So we talked about inference. What in the world is an inference? What's an inference? I'll tell you what's an inference. Here's an inference. Use two things. Experience and info from the text. Use these things and do your best to make a guess. Figure it out what the author did not say. So we make inferences not only in ELA, but we also make them in science and math and social studies as well. So first, I'm going to read this. We know that grass gives its energy to the insects, but grass can also give its energy to slugs, and grass can give its energy to rabbits. So that means that the grass is eaten by all three of these organisms in this particular food web. Now, rabbits are eaten by a fox. So what's eaten, what's eaten insects? A bull eats insects. What else eats the insects? A thrush. A thrush is a type of little bird. So the thrush can eat an insect. And frogs can eat the insect. So he give, the insect can give his energy to three different organisms. So he's got a lot of creatures trying to eat him. Um, and so uh, what else eats? eats uh, what else does the thrush eat? The thrush also can eat a slug. So we've got two different organisms that the thrush can eat either the insect or the slug. So if we look here, the frog is eating just the insect in this particular uh, food web. So here we have the vole. Now what eats the vole? The hawk can eat the vole or a fox can eat the vole. So the vole has two different organisms eating it. And if you want to know what a vole is, it kind of looks like a mouse creature. Uh, you can look it up if you want. So the hawk has lots of food choices. You can see by these three arrows. So the hawk can eat the frog, the hawk can eat the vole, or the hawk can eat the thrush. The fox eats a lot of the same things. The fox eats the frog, the fox eats the bull, and the fox eats the rabbit. Now technically, the hawk could also eat the rabbit, but that was a really complicated error to draw, so I didn't put that one in there. So what would happen if the fox population increased? So we gotta actually look now, back at this question. Well, here's the fox. If his population went up, what's gonna happen to the food that he eats? Because there's gonna be a lot more fox that are eating whatever the fox eats. So if you look at his food, if he goes up, if there's more fox in the woods, there's gonna be less rabbits, there's going to be less frogs, and there's most likely gonna be less bulls. Because when he goes up, these go down. 
because he's going to be chowing down on them. Or a whole bunch of foxes are going to be chowing down on them. So what would that mean for the hawk? Because the hawk eats the frog and the hawk eats the bull. So that means that a lot of his food source is going to be gone. That only leaves him the thrush to eat. So that's going to be a problem for the hawk. So maybe the hawk's population is going to be decreased. So as the fox increases, the rabbit, frog, and bull populations decrease, and the hawk population might decrease as well. If the hawk only has the thrush to eat, then the thrush's population is going to go down too because he's going to be really hungry and that's all he has to eat. Um, so that's going to create some problems, but it's going to give some benefits to maybe the grass because if the fox population goes up and the rabbit population goes down, there's going to be less rabbits that are going to be munching our grass. So all of those different relationships are all interconnected. When one goes out of balance, the other one will um, be affected by that. So it's really important that you kind of look at everything and think logically. Uh, so here's another one for you. What would happen if, um, if humans cut down and did complete clear cutting of all the woods? I'm talking all the way down, no trees, no shrubs, nothing. What would happen to this particular uh, food web? So if there are no trees, hawks build their nests and trees. Thrushes build their um, nests close to the ground in low vegetation or between small, um, beneath small trees and shrubs. Um, a lot of rabbits make their burrows in grassy, grassy sections and they use the forest trees as cover to protect them from predators. Fox um, will use a lot of the cover to be able to sneak up on prey. So that throws a huge loop in and a huge uh, chink in our food web here. So that's going to affect a whole bunch of organisms. So um, if you don't have any place to build nests, the hawk and the thrush populations are going to decrease. Uh, there also is not going to be a safe place for um, tree cover and protection for rabbits. So they're going to decrease. The fox would probably decrease uh, because he's not going to have that protective covering when he's hunting. Uh, so that's really going to wipe out a lot of our populations. Um, who's going to be okay? Grass! Grass is going to be okay. Because if all of this was clear cut, grass is going to have plenty of sunshine to be able to grow back because there's no trees blocking that photosynthesis process. So grass is going to go up and it's going to increase. Um, but pretty much all of these other organisms are going to be negatively impacted. But that would be a positive impact for grass. So um, you're really going to have to be thinking critically using those higher order thinking skills this week and really making sure that you read those little arrows. Remember, if they're putting a graphic in there, it's not just because they want it to be pretty fine. They're putting that graphic in there to give you important information that you're going to need to be able to answer the questions. So make sure you're reading all of it. I'll talk to you soon, fifth grade. I'll talk to you probably uh, this week. See you soon. Bye-bye.